When we first saw this 1961 International 4300 four-wheel drive tractor, owned by Drumheller Alberta farmer Albert Jensen several years ago, he had only owned it for a very short time and hadn't even looked it over in the shop yet. From what I understood, it sat down where it did for 15, 20 years and it had a can over the exhaust and, and we haven't done anything to it and it runs, so. From there, Jensen brought it back to the family's farm shop and they got to work on it. They went through the whole tractor from top to bottom, including the transmission and the engine, and restored it to like new condition. Jensen, a longtime international collector, covered a lot of miles to acquire this tractor. It came from Scotts Bluff, Nebraska out of an auction sale of 6,000 tractors to our yard and then I believe before we dismantled it we hauled it to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan to one of these IHC, well to an IHC member event, right? Right. And then I believe it went back to the uh, southeast corner of our shop for the last four and a half years. <laughs> Here we see the restored 4300 being driven by Jensen's hired man at an International Harvester Vintage Farm Equipment Show in Olds, Alberta. Jensen figures right now he has fewer than five hours on the restored 300 horsepower DT817 engine. Finding all the necessary engine components was a challenge, but they managed to get the job done. The engine itself had a long and successful run at International. It was the beginning of a DT817 run Harvester had from, from then probably till I'm, we were talking the other day that until uh, they, uh, whatever you want to call it, went out of business, they still used the, the base model and uh, their huff loaders, right? They were used extensively in all their cats, TD25s. You have probably noticed by now that the Jensen's have removed the factory cab from the tractor. Albert says they may put it back on sometime in the future, depending on what types of shows they attend with it. Only about 40 to 45 of these tractors were ever built, which took place at the Huff plant, where IH also built construction equipment. So some of the components were, were out of their loader line, and it's a, it's a full, it's an all-wheel steer. It'll either steer with front, back, or crab, right? The tires are as close to original as the Jensen's could find, and Albert told us the rest of the tractor is just like the original 4300. They were able to track down the original service manuals, which helped a great deal during the restoration. One thing which became very clear is that the tractor has a lot of modern features, especially considering that it was built back in the early 1960s. It was very, you know, the machine's very unique for its time period that it has so many features, right? You know, an automatic transmission, air brakes, you know, pre-cleaner on the air filter. Is it so far ahead of its time? Two hydraulic pumps. In the early 1960s, four-wheel drive tractors were practically unheard of, and anything even approaching 100 horsepower was considered a real monster. Jensen knows a farmer who bought a 4300 when they first came out and took full advantage of its 300 horsepower. There was one sold in Three Hills, and I actually was just up there, and he still got it. And they'd bought theirs in 1961, and his story is really good because they went from a WD-9 to this, and his dad... Him and his brother went down to Ontario, made a deal with Harvester directly, and to go from a 12-foot cultivator to a, they custom built him, a, I think, a 40-foot. But very few farmers at the time were willing to make such a large jump in the size of their tractors, which is the main reason why less than 50 of these machines were ever built. Jensen believes this tractor was originally used on a potato farm in Idaho, where the three-point hitch attachment on the back would have come in handy for tillage. And so, like, if it was an irrigation, like, they would have used, we've got the rest of the shanks, but, like, an irrigation where it gets hard pan, it could be used for that. But it, it's got a drawbar on it, so that's just a quick touch. So it could, it could, that's probably what it was for subsoiling and irrigation or whatever, right? The restoration of this tractor was a very labor-intensive project, but Jensen believes it was time well spent. Since so few of the 4300 models were built in the first place, we were not at all surprised to find out that this is now an extremely rare tractor. There was there was three in Canada, and one went for auction two summers ago, which I bid on, and it went to Kansas. And the, there is one other one that I know of. Jensen did not want to disclose the cost of purchasing and restoring this 1961 International 4300, but he did admit it was the most expensive rebuild he has ever done. Now that the project is complete, he thoroughly enjoys sharing it with other vintage farm machinery enthusiasts.